Hey guys, Nexi here. In this video I'm going to show you how to change capacitive sensor probe on your Creality CR10S Pro to inductive one and how you can level your printer and get that perfect first layer. Stay tuned. This is my CR10S Pro. It's a fantastic 3D printer with outstanding print quality. If you're new to the channel, make sure that you check my video review that I made recently. Now in that review video, my biggest complaint was that this machine used capacitive probe for auto level instead of inductive one, which is a big difference. While capacitive sensor can detect pretty much everything, even your finger, they will not give you your consistent Z offset reading because they react with the temperature and the moisture in the air. And that can make the sensor to go off up to 0.2 mm, which in 3D printer world is a lot. On other hand, inductive sensor does not react with the moisture in the air or on the temperature change. They only detect metal surfaces and they give constant Z offset reading every time. I got this inductive sensor for less than 10 US dollars. It's a direct match in a size. Only the color of the sensor and the color of the cable is a bit different and the sensor does not come with a connector so you need some basic soldering skills and the common sense to install this sensor. Beside tools that you got with a printer you can also need the soldering iron some soldering wire, some fat, heat shrink, and electrical tape. First, turn off your printer or even better, unplug the power cord. Then, place the printer on the side. On the extruder mount under the filament sensor, there are two screws that we need to unscrew. Next, there is one more screw underneath this metal cover that you need to unscrew as well. When you've done it, slowly take off the metal cover. Next, follow the sensor cable and unplug it from the board. Here is the closer look. It says Z- on it. On the inner side of the connector there is a small pin lock. Press it with your nail and pull it down. Now let's take a look on the wiring and on the connector. We have a two match color, black and blue. Next, cut the sensor wire approximately 10 cm away from the connector. Then take the new sensor, measure 55 cm of the cable from the probe and cut it. Next step, remove insulation and expose the wires of the sensor probe and then on the connector cable that we cut from the old sensor. Then place the small heat shrink on the each wire and one bigger one on the sensor cable. Next up is the soldering. When you're done, wires should look like this. Then place the heat shrink over the wires and apply some heat. I use this small torch. Next, slide the cable rubber insulation and the heat shrink on the place and apply some heat. Done. Now we need to take out the capacitive probe. There are two screws on the X carriage cover that we need to unscrew and one cable tie that we need to cut. Now gently take off the metal cover and place it on the side. Now we can see exposed hot end on the right side and the capacitive probe on the left side. It looks like there are no extra screws holding the sensor in a place, only two screws on the side. So it looks like that we don't need to take this cover off. Alright, we know now. Now, take the small Allen key and unscrew both screws on the sensor. Now the sensor is free and we can drag it up like so. On the back of the printer on the extruder bracket, there are two cable ties that we need to cut to free the sensor cable. Now we can drive capacitive sensor out of the cable wrap. And now we are going to install the new sensor. First take off these adjusting screws. Push the new sensor cable back to the cable wrap. Next slide the sensor in and gently screw both of the screws just a tiny bit to keep the sensor in place. Next reinstall the metal cover. Place both screws back in place and install the cable tie. Take a cable wrap and drag it a bit to make it nice and even. Now install both cable ties back in a place at the end of the cable wrap. This will prevent cables to get loose during printing. Next, plug the sensor back in a place. It's a Z- in the case that you forget it. Then reinstall the metal protector cover and screw down both screws on the top and don't forget one screw at the bottom. Now turn the printer on and take some metal object and place it under the sensor. If LED comes on, when you place the metal object on it, that means the sensor is working correctly. And just to confirm that this sensor is the inductive one, 
so it won't detect your finger anymore, or any other object except metal ones. And that's exactly what we are looking for. Now drag your sensor to approximately the same height as your nozzle, as we need to adjust it first, and clean your nozzle from filament left over. If you need to warm up the printer, do it, nozzle needs to be clean. Now go to the settings and click on leveling. Let your printer home first. Take the level acrylic piece and 0.2mm filler that you got in a box with a printer and place under the sensor and underneath the nozzle. If you lost it, take something similar that is 3.8mm thick, some non-metal object and the A4 paper. Make sure that you lose the screws on the side on the sensor probe and gently start pressing minus Z on the screen until the nozzle touches the filler. Now tie down the sensor screws, click on the Z home again and remove that acrylic piece and the filler. Let the printer now get the new Z offset. Now we need to manually level the printer, but before that we need to make sure that the both sides of the Z lead screw are nice and even. Take that acrylic leveling piece and place it under the right side of the X-axis extrusion. Now using your fingers, twist the both Z coupler until extrusion touch the acrylic part. Then level the left side. Both sides need to be leveled before you continue. Also I want to point out that it is a good idea to heat up the heated bed to around 60 degrees and then run the manual and auto level procedure. Next click on the manual leveling and click off the each number and manually level the printer using the filler and adjustment wheels. Run this process at least 3 times to make it perfect. Now go back and click on the measuring. Let the printer run through the leveling process. When it's finished, you will get the measurements similar like this and they are now saved in a printer memory. And now let's run some leveling test prints. I have already prepared this G-code. And now we need to do some final leveling touches. When printer starts to print, take a close look on the nozzle and on the first layer. If your nozzle is too close or too far from the printing surface, click on the adjust and then depending on your results, click on the minus or on the plus on the z-axis offset. My nozzle was a bit too close, so I click on the plus z few times and 0.05mm seems to be good for now. And I will continue to watch the printing process and play with my Z offset. Alright, printing is finished now and let me turn off this camera light so that you can see my first layer results better. For example, this first print on the left corner is with the zero Z offset up till half of the print and then I click plus 0.05 millimeter which did the job. And next one in the middle is printed fine with 0.05 millimeter. This one here is printed with 0.06mm and the surface feels a bit more smooth. So I might keep this offset and slightly increase the extrusion multiplier to fill up these gaps. By the way, the Z offset will remain in a printer memory until you decided to change it. And when you get it perfect, look how easy it is to remove your prints now. And now for the final level test, I made this circle, which go over entire heat bed. It's only one layer thick, so let's see how it goes. Well for now, it looks very good. Also I wanna suggest that you place G29 command in your start G-code script, so the printer can take the new auto level measurement before each print. This will greatly improve your auto level position, because aluminum heat bed can flex a bit during the temperature change or you can just preheat heated bed to 65 degrees or whatever temperature you're using on the heated bed and then run the auto level. In that case, you don't need G29 command in the start of the G-code script. Alright, printing is finished and let's take it off. Well, I gotta say, it looks very good. Surface is a very smooth and even. Now that's the perfect first layer. You can make taco with it. Awesome. 
Alright guys, I hope that I help you with your leveling issues that you might experience with your CR10S Pro. I think this small investment into this inductive probe make this printer to perform great and consistent as it should be. So Creality, if you're watching this video, please use inductive sensor in your CR10S Pro and let us make her to enjoy in this machine. Link of this inductive sensor and of this 3D printer you can find in the video description. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And I catch you next time. Bye bye.